Hello class, as you can see my face is not in this video this time because I wanted to get back to the movie that I started a couple hours ago and I wanted to make this video real fast and I didn't want to sit up in a chair and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, this is Cam's part two. Here's STEM news. New Horizons, I would Google for the spacecraft New Horizons. It performed this flyby of this object called Ultima Thule and new images of that object are coming in um, in the next few days. So that's really exciting. I would, I would definitely Google that and figure out some more information. A couple of announcements before we get started. We will be splitting up into two learning groups, flipped and traditional. I made the assignments for those groups already, so just be on the lookout for that. And we have notebook check coming up. So make sure your notebook is up to date with titles, um, stamps, make sure everything is taped in. It needs to be taped in, especially from Unit 4. That's really what we're going to be looking at. Here are all the steps of the project, steps 1 through 7. I'm not really going to go over one. If you need to use this as a reference, go to the document. The document has everything you need. This video is mostly the how-to on some of the uh, some of the more difficult stuff that you need tutorials for. Steps 2 and 3, I'm going to play this video that we played in class, just so you have it as a reference. Cams are frequently used in mechanisms to cause linear motion. In this video, we will investigate how to design and construct a cam in order to create the specific motion we want to create. How do you design a mechanism to replicate a real-life linear motion? The first step is to analyze the motion that you would like to create. Once you have identified the motion, you can represent it graphically. Suppose you want to replicate the motion of a horse rearing up onto its back legs as shown in the video. The horse's front hooves begin on the ground, then move up to the top of the motion. The horse remains in the upright position momentarily, and then the front hooves return to the ground. Which of these motion graphs do you think might be used to best represent the motion of the horse's head and chest? Perhaps the red motion graph better represents the motion of the horse's head and chest. It indicates that the horse moved up, then remained at the top of its motion for a time, and then fell back down to the ground. Notice that the horizontal axis of this motion graph is time. But if we wanted to create a cam to create this motion repetitively as we turned a crank, we could use the same graph shape but use cam rotation as the independent variable. Once you have identified and graphically modeled the motion that you would like to replicate, how do you design a cam to imitate that motion in an automata? Let's look at an example motion graph. Can you think of any real phenomenon that might be represented by this motion graph? Perhaps this motion graph could represent the bobbing of a boat on gentle waves or the rising and setting of the sun. This graph represents the motion resulting from a cam that was designed to replicate the motion displayed in that motion graph. Note that the shape of the graph is the same. However, the horizontal axis, x-axis, now represents the angle of rotation instead of time, and the vertical axis, y-axis, represents the radial dimension of the cam and includes a scale. Study the graph. What is the minimum radial dimension of the cam? The minimum radial dimension of the cam is 0.75 inches. What is the maximum radial dimension? The maximum radial dimension of the cam is 2.25 inches. What is the maximum displacement of the follower that will result if the cam is rotated about an axle? The maximum displacement will be 2.25 minus 0.75, or 1.5 inches. This cam was designed to produce the motion indicated in the motion graph. Notice that the angle of rotation is shown on the face of the cam. The cam will rotate clockwise. As the cam rotates clockwise about the axle, the follower will move up and down as the radial dimension changes. When the cam has rotated 45 degrees, the dimension to the point of contact with the follower is 1 inch. Watch as the motion graph is traced out as the cam rotates.
Now that you have seen the connection between radial dimension of the cam and the motion graph, let's design a cam to replicate a specific motion. How would you represent the motion of the barbell lifted by a weightlifter in a competition? Sketch the shape of a motion graph that you might use. This graph could represent the motion of the barbell. Note that the independent variable is time. If we wanted to replicate the motion of the barbell being lifted by a weightlifter in an automata using a cam mechanism, we could use rotation of cam as the independent variable. To design the cam, we next must determine the displacement of the barbell at each level. First, let's set the minimum radial dimension of the cam to a quarter of an inch to allow for the hole of the axle and provide sufficient material to avoid breaking the cam through the hole. Let's assume that we will displace the barbell in the automata 0.75 inches to waist height and then another 0.875 inches to a position above the head of the automata weightlifter. So we want to design a cam that will create a maximum displacement of 0.75 plus 0.875, which equals 1.625 inches. Note that you must consider the available clearance of your cam in the cam assembly. Be sure that your cam size is not too large for the box that will house the mechanism. And let's assume the maximum radial dimension of this cam is 2 inches. Note that your specifications may be different depending on your project criteria and constraints. This means that the cam profile must fall between the two circles representing the minimum radial dimension and the maximum radial dimension. Watch as each point on the motion graph are translated to the polar grid. At 0 degrees, the cam radial dimension is 0.25 inches. At 45 degrees, the radial dimension is again 0.25 inches. At 90 degrees, the radial dimension is 0.625 inches, and so on. Notice that the motion graph is vertical at 315 degrees. This represents the barbell falling after the weightlifter drops the bar. This drop is represented by a radial line on the polar grid. On the polar grid, simply plot a point that corresponds to the maximum radial dimension on the motion graph and a separate point that corresponds to the minimum radial dimension on the motion graph. Now connect the points on the polar grid with lines, straight or curved, that you feel will best produce the desired motion. Now you have a template with accurate dimensions for your cam. You can use the template to create a 3D computer model and prototype your cam using a 3D printer. Or you can use the template as a pattern to cut out your cam by hand in the material of your choice. What real-life motion would you like to replicate in your automata design? How would you represent the desired displacement on a motion graph? Once you have developed a motion graph to represent the linear motion you have in mind, you can use a polar grid to align the desired linear motion to the rotational motion of a cam. Okay, step four, the 3D model. I'm going to create a model of this example cam here, and I'm going to show you what I want to do in Inventor. So, first things first, make sure you're in the right project, Automata Simulation. That's going to make it a whole lot easier whenever you put this cam inside the assembly. Make sure you are in your H drive, not C drive, not C drive, not C drive. If it says blah, 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 temp in here, that's bad. That means you did not extract the file after you downloaded it like I asked you to in the last video. Either go back and check that last video on part one or come and ask me for help. It should not say temp, it should not say C right here, it should say H. Okay, if you're in that right file, we can create a new part. First things first, name it, save it and name it, save it and name it. I can hit control S, but it didn't work. Here we go, save it. Uh, give it a new unique name because this is your unique cam. I'm going to name it cam from the example video, but you name it whatever is uh, meaningful to you. Make sure you're in the folder with all of your other IPT files in here. All right, and first things first, always start with the 2D sketch on the XY plane. It doesn't have to be on the XY plane, but that's what I like. We're going to insert points here, but first we gotta make sure our, our Excel file looks just like this one. Of course, except for millimeters, we're gonna make it say inches. I have luckily created 
a document for you that has that template. It'll create all that data for you. So polar conversion, download this Excel file. Sorry, it's Excel and not Google Sheets. I like Google Sheets more. If you open it up, it'll look like this. This template is what it should be, and I've created these formulas for you that will convert your uh, radial and angle of rotation here, radial dimension and angle of rotation into X and Y coordinates. If you are interested in this, look and see what this formula does. Computer science people, math people, it's pretty interesting. But you can just paste in, just like, uh, you know, make sure you're using the correct radial dimension data. I'm going to use this from my polar grid, use it from your polar grid. I'm going to plop it in. Okay, and this is what it looks like after I plopped it in. If you have to add more points, like for instance, if you have a radial line, I have two points here that I want to add. 315 degrees and 0.25 inches and uh, whatever that was, 1.8 inch, about 1.8. So I can just add it right here, 315 and 0 0.25. Bam, and you see this, these coordinates auto-populate over here. And uh, if you wanted more data, oops, I'm sorry, that should be 45. If you wanted more, you could change this to 30 and then do 60, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. And it'll just change. Even if you add more to the bottom, it'll change. Let me make sure this is accurate. 45 and 90 um, before I save it. You can save it and change the name if you want to, but it doesn't really matter. Save it. Make sure you know where it's saved to. So whatever you hit points, insert points in your inventor. Make sure mine, mine was saved to my desktop. Here it is, polar conversion. Open it up and it should auto populate the points that look just like your polar grid that we created before. And if I open this up, yeah, I think it's a spitting image. So what I can do is a spline, sorry, it normally says line tool here, but underneath line, we can create a spline. That's an interpolation. And we can just click on these points, ding, ding, ding. Match them all up, bada bing, bada boom, forget about it, and it'll create our curve auto-magically, auto-magically. And we could leave it like this, um, and then create a line between these two. I would prefer it to be a little bit more like this, and this interpolation has a little bit of a bump anyway, so... You know, just kind of make it up to you. Um, you might have to mess with the spline tools and line tools a little bit on each of these before you'll have a very good uh, cam for you. But anyway, this is this is decently good here. Let's finish this up. And then, yeah, like I said, I wanted that straight line here. Ding. To this point, ding. And I think that would work. Let's hope. Let's cross our fingers. I think if I extrude it, I can select that surface. And again, I want three sixteenths of an inch. And you guys know how to add the hole right into the center, too. This is step five. I'm not going to talk about step five. Let's jump to step six, inventor drawing. So this is a brand new environment in inventor. Once you have your cam all set up, properly dimensioned, of course, you can create a new file, new file. You could do this under my home as well. But under English, making sure we're in inches, go down to drawing. We've done parts, we've done assemblies. Now we're doing drawings. I want to do this IDW, ANSI. Okay, create. Now this drawing file opens with all these standards attached. We have this title block here. We actually want to delete this one. You'll see in a second why. Right click up here on sheet one, edit sheet. Now, uh, of course, we want to give it a good name, and I call, I can call it cam underscore example video uh, drawing. And again, make yours specific to what your cam name is. And this is the big thing, the size. It needs to be an A size sheet, an A size sheet. The D is good for when you're printing out posters and stuff. We are just printing out A size sheets. That's just the 8.5 by 11 that we're familiar with. Okay, and now we can add that title block back by going under Drawing Resources, Title Blocks, and C A. And once we double click that, it comes up down here. This is our drawing sheet, and here's our actual title block. We can add uh, content to our title block later. So, first, I want to add a base view. 
And fortunately for me, mine automatically popped up as this cam. But if you want to, you can open, or if you need to, you can browse and find the cam that you're actually adding today. Um, mine is cam example video .ipt. Open, and this will create a base view. And you can just click on the actual thing. As long as you're in this dialog box here, as long as you're still editing the base view first, you can click and drag. Mine actually looks good on a one-to-one -one scale, but if you want to change the scale, make it bigger, depending on how big it is, uh, make it smaller. I think the one-to-one -one scale is probably going to be good. If, you know, it might kind of spill out of bounds once we, once we put other, other views on here. So we could actually make it smaller. Not quite a half, but we could do it between a half and, and one. So 0.75. I accidentally hit enter, um, but that's fine. I can just I can just start over or go back. Uh, so this is 0.75. I, again, I'm going to try it on a one to one scale. So there is that. And I can actually add these projected views right here and over here. If you just click, it'll create that view for you. And this over here is my um, my, my 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 isometric view. OK. Uh, once you hit OK, though, it places those views and see how they looked a little different. If I try to click and drag this thing, it's not going anywhere. I have to click and drag the edges. And these the, all these uh, views are all aligned to each other. So it turns out that my my one to one scale actually does look pretty good. Make sure your isometric is over here next to all of your other views. So the next thing I want to do is make sure you dimension it, which is under the annotate tab in the ribbon. And dimension. Um, if you have a funky looking cam like this, you might have some weird dimensions, but I can go from this point to this point and show my max dimension as 1.8. I really like that dimension. Um, you just have to finagle the mouse a little bit. This will pop up to give you some formatting choices. You just hit OK. We don't want to mess with that right now. And I also want my minimal dimension. Uh, maybe this right here, the smallest, smallest radial dimension. That is, let's see, make it happen, make it happen, cabin. That is a 0.25. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? There we go, 0.25. Okay, uh, maybe I can, I can click and drag. Uh, I'll figure out how to do that later. But I want, you know, at least the smallest and the and the largest radial dimension. Also, um, I want to add the hole here, dimensions for the hole. And again, you could just click on dimension, but that would just give you the circle. But I want the actual hole, which is 3 16 inch and 3 16 inch deep. That's what that means, 3 16 inch in diameter and 3 16 inch deep. deep. This is a leader line, so it has to be offset a little bit. It should not be straight up and down. It should be at an angle at an angle and we don't want to get confused with that other extension line that i've got there um and i do want a dimension for the depth it could be up here it could be over here it doesn't really matter i think i want mine to be between here and here that's the depth that's 3 16 inch you i suppose you could change it to say exactly 3 16 but that's fine for now and that's really all you need just a few dimensions on um, this front face and then the depth and don't forget to add center lines center marks if your whole thing is uh, symmetrical as a circle you could add a center lines for that whole circle or if you have other circles too like that flower cam you might want to do center lines on that but I've got center lines there and now it's looking good now to fill in the title block this is the last thing uh, this title block is here, ANSI A, like we added late earlier. Um, let's see. Escape. Make sure you're out of all of your tools. Then you can double click on field text. Now, author, um, you know, mine is administrator because that's just who I'm signed in as on this computer. And then some of this other stuff down here uh, is some of what we want to fill in. But, of course, um, you know, it won't let us edit any of this data so what we have to do is go up here to i properties i properties is a really really cool function in inventor that allows you to see a bunch of stuff it's really important in in parts it'll show you some of the measurements in the parts like the density and stuff like that um, but you can also go in here and edit so under summary author you want to put your name whoever is making this part and then you want to change the title too so maybe i can say 
um, example video can. This one you can have spaces because this is actually the title. Uh, da, 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 apply and close and it should pop up here. Bailey Holsey, the date should automatically come up. The scale should be what you had before. An example video cam. Now, finally, if you save it, you save it as cam example video, make sure it's an IDW, that's by default. Then I think, let's see, do you wanna save the dependence? Um, yes, that's just making sure I want to save that IPT. Doesn't really matter because I didn't change it then that drawing number shows up. So all you need here is drawn by, the date, the title, the drawing number, and the scale. Like I said, that should be automatic, that should be automatic. You need to type in your name, title. This will come up when you save the thing, the, the drawing file. Okay, that's it. Make sure everything is good before you submit it on this Google Doc.